My article um, explores the origins of the League of Nations and I focus particularly on the way that uh, the food crisis in Austria and then the hyperinflation in Austria became the reason that the League established an economic and financial organisation for its work and also the way that there was international humanitarian agency that went into Vienna in particular but also Austria more broadly to help the Austrians in their time of crisis after the war. This is a very important episode in the sense that it helps us capture the way that people thought about security in the period immediately after the First World War. So in the last 20 years or so, uh, partly led by the United Nations Human Security Agenda, but also by the way that the world has become in many ways more unstable and certainly more multilateral, we're more sensitive to the ways in which war can also trigger environmental crises, it can trigger famine, it can trigger massive migration, displaced people, hunger, disease and continued insecurity insecurity and actually the League of Nations when it was founded in 1920 was also very aware of those problems so though historians tend to focus on society now we tend to remember that the League tried to pioneer international disarmament and it failed to establish collective security it's also the case that the League of Nations very quickly tried to deal with economic problems with financial crises with starvation it tried to develop international our agriculture, so it was aware of the way, the way it was aware of the ways in which international security was connected. My article is is really looking at the image of the soldier um, from the First World War from a contemporary perspective. So it is actually arguing that contemporary trends in British society um, are reinforcing the soldier victim image of the First World War. Well, the image of the soldier's victim isn't new. Um, it's just what's actually very interesting is from from the six 1960s onwards, what we see is a reduction of pos positive images of the First World War, a much more reinforcement of negative images, again mainly reinforced by, by contemporary trends. And what I wanted to do in the article was look at what was happening in the last 10 years really. Um, it's the last 10 years I'm really interested in because there's lots of debate and there's already been lots of debate about when this victim image became important, when this victim image became um, dominant. What I'm looking at um, in the article is why it becomes dominant, why, why it has become dominant in the last 10 years, and actually for the future, what, what image are we going to have for the first, about the soldier in the First World War in the future? I suppose the main theme of the article is that our conception of the Great War and all wars is fundamentally determined or shaped or influenced by works of art and to underline, if you like, the power of art in this sphere. And I pursued that not through, I think, the most obvious way, which is poetry, war poetry, Wilfred Owen, Siegfried Sassoon, all that, but painting, and in particular one painting by Paul Clay called Angelus Novus, a little painting of a little angel, which I think has come to lodge in the European cultural imagination. Clay made the painting in 1920, in other words, just after the Great War, and it clearly refers to his experience, the artist's experience in the Great War. Walter Benjamin, who was the first owner of the painting, and I suppose the first interpreter of the painting, wrote his great text on it in 1940. In other words, during the Second World War. And Benjamin must have been affected by the moment in which he wrote 1940, as well as the moment at which it was painted, 1920. So I think there's an automatic link between the two world wars. And then afterwards, it becomes a kind of source or inspiration for other thinkers and other artists. For example, in 1989, when the Berlin Wall is coming down, when the Soviet uh, Union is collapsing, when all of that is happening, 
there is another work called The Angel of History, the same title that Benjamin gave it, made by the German artist Kiefer. So I think that the idea in the painting, the idea of the angel, if you like, the idea of the angel of history, is recurs throughout the 20th century. And I think it will recur throughout the 21st century. It's become so powerful.